Welcome to the Best of the Left Activism Update. My name is Lauren, and I'm the Activism Czar at bestoftheleft.com. Over the past few weeks, we have discussed different measures of how to get involved in protecting civil rights, be it in the LGBTQ community or against the racist, undemocratic systems that target African American, Latino, and other minorities. We have asked you to support state-level pro-equality and marriage referendums and legislation, as well as engaging in community-led pride events, and more recently, signing a petition at bit.ly slash stopalec to combat Alec's attempt in subverting minority voting rights and hate crime-enabling stand-your-ground laws. It is important to remember civil rights do not occur in a vacuum. The boundaries are inevitably blurred across multiple modes of identification, and it remains vital we strive for a common goal to seek the end of all forms of civil inequality and injustice. This is why it is so exciting to witness against previously predicted assumptions both LGBT and African American communities joining in an alliance to support each other for continual equal rights under the law. While at Netroots Nation last week, Jay and I had the privilege of hearing current NAACP President Ben Jealous speak about just that. His and the NAACP's recent endorsement for gay marriage is quickly becoming a contemporary rallying call to achieve equality for everyone. Yet his community also continues to bear a harsh, unequal burden. New York City's controversial stop-and-frisk program continues to remain one of the most damaging and overtly racist forms of police profiling. Last year, NYPD officers conducted close to 700,000 street stops, with more than 4 million total while under Mayor Bloomberg's administration. The spike in street interrogations has done little to remove firearms from the streets, the main reason behind stop and frisk, despite zero evidence that proves a causal link in the two-decade-long reduction of street violence dropping steadily in New York City. In fact, while black and Latino males between the ages of 14 and 24 account for only 4.7% of the population, they were profiled in 41.6% of the stops in 2011. The number of stops of young black men exceeded the entire city population of young black men. Likewise, 9 out of 10 people stopped are totally innocent and are neither arrested nor ticketed. Even the NYPD admits its tactics are not about making arrests, but as a preemptive measure that such stops will dissuade people from carrying weapons in the first place. As it stands, these measures are similar to racial profiling for law-abiding Muslim Americans. This wholesale violation of civil rights has sown a deep mistrust between police officers and the communities they are supposed to protect. It is also a problem that until now has evaded both judicial oversight and judicial review. So here's what we can do. If you are near or in New York City this Sunday, June 17th at 3 p.m., please join the civil rights, faith, labor, and community groups in a silent march against New York City's stop and frisk policy. On Father's Day, we can help stand together to show that New Yorkers, on behalf of all Americans, refuse to let our children be victimized by racial profiling. Likewise, leaders from the queer community will also be on hand to offer support. In fact, it was the historic Stonewall Inn in Greenwich Village where the backlash against police harassment in June 1969 launched the modern LGBT rights movement. As Herdin Gradic, president of GLAAD, has stated, LGBT people of color are twice as likely to experience police harassment simply because of who they are or what they look like. The time has come for communities to work together to ensure that every person has the ability to walk the streets for their community without fear of harassment from fellow community members and those we entrust to keep our community safe. Similarly, Al Sharpton has stated, the coming together of civil rights leaders and LGBT leaders on this issue is a historic union with broad social and political ramifications. If we fight for each other's issues, it broadens and strengthens each respective movement. So please take a stand with the New York NAACP and LGBT communities. Please go to silentmarchnyc.org for March details. On a national scale, if you cannot attend the march, we suggest you check out Communities United for Police Reform at changethenypd.org slash pledge. This is where you can help take the pledge to build community, promote safety, and end discriminatory, unlawful, abusive policing practices in New York City. So whether you rally in New York or stand with the CPR, you too can make your voice heard. This has been a Best of the Left activism update. For more information about links in this segment, please consult the show notes at bestoftheleft.com.